and welcome back to the channel my 2022 goals on this video all the goals that i'm going to be talking about are going to be linked to the direction of this channel careers and finance and for example stocks investing property investing and speculative investing which includes cryptos um, shorting and options so make sure to stay tuned to this playlist to check out my 2022 goals. So my goals for 2022 for investing are essentially made up of investing £50,000 into various different investment opportunities. I'm going to break this down into basically three buckets. There are startups, so that's reinvesting the startups, my pension and ISA buckets. Um, and then the third is kind of borrowed money or a little bit of leverage i'm going to talk about it in this video so reinvesting in startups like with startups i'm going to be doing a series on why a lot of investors should be considering it it's not advice it's just my opinion i think investing in startups is a kind of natural extension of investing in in small cap or small capitalization stocks so when you're picking stocks like i have been for over 15 years sometimes you can feel like you want to get involved a bit earlier or maybe you want to have a little bit more active involvement involvement in the story being able to email people um, having it like your own little community around those shares or those startups and that's really available for startups more so than companies listed you know on the SP or the FTSE or whatever or even in the uh, the alternative investment market, the AIM market. So that's number one, is I want to reinvest in certain companies um, that I think have, have got a better chance of success, you know, ones that have shown growth, that kind of thing. I'll probably limit the amount of investment that I put into new companies. It is kind of easier said than done, because it's actually quite addictive. Uh, when new companies come out, it can be quite exciting. And it, I would say it is particularly difficult to rejects uh, a startup which you think could easily 10x 20x 30x so i'm going to try and be a bit more disciplined this year about what i do invest in in terms of startups the other thing i'm going to do with startups is try to create a process because i felt in certain cases i didn't always get it right in terms of the companies that i invested in and the amounts i chose a lot of good companies that have done quite well but i think i got it wrong with the amounts number two is I need to deploy some of my pension funds. Now, I can talk about this in, in more detail if you guys want a bit more information, but there is a, a way that you can put money uh, into a pension and you can choose what to do with it. And that's what I've done. So I've been able to transfer some funds from my freelancing into a, a pension fund. And what I need to do now and for 2022 is decide where I'm gonna put that money which for someone like me, that's quite interesting. And it's something that I'm looking forward to. I do have some companies that I'm looking to, to put more into and in a tax efficient way. I think it's always good to start a pension. And I think sometimes I get asked the question, when's the best time to start a pension? And I guess my answer to that is today, if you can. Even if you're in your twenties, it's always a good, good idea because the earlier you start, the more it's gonna grow and time does does move on whether we like it or not we're all getting older um day, day by day and when you get to 55 is basically just around the corner for most of us for me at the moment it's 17 years away 18 years away nevertheless i will be old at some point and older and i will be looking to get some income and have a good lifestyle from the pension so i'm going to be in 2022 i'm going to be choosing the stocks that I'm interested in, the asset classes I'm interested in to invest in my pension to grow it because it is not very significant at the moment and I'd like it to grow over time. The third more controversial way um, that I'm going to invest in 2022, drum roll, is I'm actually considering using a bit of leverage. I've used leverage in the past with options with some interesting results. I'm sure I'll be posting some of those um, videos at some point in the future, making lots of money, losing lots of money, five figure amounts either way. I kind of figured this out that there would be a, a different way of using leverage, maybe something that's a little bit less risky. So I'm thinking of like using personal loans to cover some of my day-to-day -day expenses and then using the money that I can save on um, investing in certain opportunities. Now, this is not advice for anyone. Uh, this is just what I'm, I'm gonna do uh, or I'm considering doing. The reason I'm considering doing it is because I'm quite good at finding certain stocks that I believe that are gonna do well. But the challenge I'm finding is I'm not able to really allocate quite as much capital as I'd like to. 
Translated, that means I'm not able to put in as much money as early as I'd like. Typically with these things, the more money that you invest, the earlier on, the better one does. If one can do the hard task of finding and locating quality companies that are going to grow over time, the next thing is actually putting in a meaningful amount of money that will make a difference to one's future. And at the moment, because I'm buying a property with, with my partner and I'm doing some stuff uh, with buy to let property, I don't necessarily have the, 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 the kind of liquid cash to be able to put in into some of the opportunities that I found. So I'm actually going to, yeah, I'm considering um, a personal loan type instrument to be able to give me a little bit of firepower. Uh, loan rates at the time of filming are incredibly low, kind of between two or three percent um, in the most part. So, you know, this year I think I, I achieved maybe 17 to 20 percent, something like that. So two percent doesn't doesn't scare me too much in terms of, of borrowing. Now, listen, this isn't advice. This is just what I'm going to do. So it's, it can't be seen as a recommendation. It takes a long time to learn investing. I've been doing it over 15 years and I wouldn't recommend it to anybody that hasn't got at least um, investment experience because anything can happen in the market. Um, my context is very different from, from, from yours. And, you know, I've come to this conclusion over a number of years. So there you go. There's my three things that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be reinvesting in some startups and trying to create a process um, for investing in startups. So they're the three things. Number one is reinvesting in startups, creating a process for me to choose startups and um, allocate you know, funds to those startups. And number two is going to be building my pension and choosing the right stocks um, for my pension and, and planting the seed to let it grow over a number of years. And number three, using different types of leverage to try to get a bit more firepower in some of these growth stocks that I feel confident about and have very high conviction from kind of months, if not years of research. Okay, guys, um, that's the end of this part of the video uh, for my investment goals for 2022. Remember that knowledge is power, especially the right kind of knowledge and progress is everything. I'll see you in the next one.